Hello and welcome to St. John's School of Theology and Seminary. In this session, I want to reflect on the role of the organist as leader of congregational song. And I think the joy of leading congregational singing is that it is so relational. It calls me into a relationship with all of the people who are singing. I have to be aware of them, how they breathe, how they sing, whether they're dragging, where they're at, how I can push them, how I can support them, how I can guide them. Very relational. And this makes it quite different from the other kind of joy of playing the organ as a soloist, playing solo repertoire of a postlude or, or an organ concert, where I'm really thinking about what's going on here and my technique. And of course, I'm doing it for the people, but they're merely listeners. Playing organ as a hymn leader is much more interactive and dynamic. And here's the image I would like to give you. I think we are the conductor of the congregation from the console. You know, a conductor, she or he looks at the choir, does a nice breathing gesture, make it nice and deep to encourage people to take a deep breath, make it big enough so that they have time to breathe, and it's like this, and we begin. We're doing all of that from the organ console. We're doing that by feeling the breath, by feeling our release from the keys, and feeling when we come in again. So I want to try to illustrate this by making the transition from the end of a stanza to the beginning of the next stanza. And the tune that I'm playing here is St. Flavian. So here's how I would try to conduct the congregation and breathe with them. Here's the end of one stanza. Now, there, I was actually just using my left hand because I wanted to direct with the right hand. I think without doing that directing, that's still the feel that we want. So, something like this. Now, there, you saw me doing a little bit of a head bob. I don't know what your studio organ teacher would say about that. I think it's a good idea. You know, nothing too excessive, and you don't want to slide off the bench accidentally. But we do want to have that feel in the very marrow of our bones that we're leading in the people. So it's as if I'm conducting you know, a choir or a congregation from the council and they're looking at me even though they aren't. And if you get really good at it, if you know the notes well enough, that you don't have to stare at the notes, you can look at the people. And you're aware of the space, of the reverb, of the echo, of how it feels right as we all do this together. Now, there is one technical thing about rhythm and it's this. The rhythm has to continue between the stanzas. It can't be just a fermata, all time stops, and then it all died, and then when we feel like it, we'll finally just sort of a do. No. The rhythm continues. continues. three different ways. The first time I added no beats, I just went right on. One, two, three. Okay, you 
could do that. That might work, but your congregation might want more of a breath. Add a breath that's incremental. So the second time I added exactly two beats and then I breathed and then I came in with the people. Then the last time, just to see what it felt like, I experimented with adding an entire measure. To my taste, that felt like too much, and I like the middle option the best, but there's not necessarily a right way to do it. You have to go with your judgment, your feel, your relationality to the congregation, the acoustics of the space, and what feels right. You decide, and whatever you decide, do it confidently and enjoy yourself.